Welcome to a Minnesota Left-Handers feature. My name is Nate Doimer with Minnesota Left-Handers. At Minnesota Left-Handers, our goal is to provide events and content that bring together golfers in Minnesota, with maybe a special fondness for the lefty golfer. With this feature series, I want to provide and highlight information about uh, important happenings in the game of golf. This could include a course highlight, a, an event background, a, a discussion around a, a particular event, maybe, maybe an event that happens in Minnesota and from the pro golf world or, or something of that nature. I might also highlight a player. And in this episode, I'd like to highlight this guy. A 25-year-old University of South California alum, he recorded eight top 10 finishes this season alone, including a runner-up at the Utah Championship presented by Zion's Bank. He's headed to the PGA Tour for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen from San Jose, California, Justin Suh. Justin Suh's path to stardom seemed paved with gold as a 2019 graduate of college. That meant that he turned pro along with the likes of Matt Wolf, Victor Hovland, and Colin Morikawa. While the wins seemed to come quickly for those three, Justin Suh battled injuries that had to take advantage and had to take advantage of sponsor exemptions and Monday qualifiers to get into PGA Tour events. Monday qualifiers are an absolute grind, as typically only four players come out of a Monday queue for any given event, that there might be as, to- as many as 75 players in that field. All it takes for a player is to get hot for one day, and he can get in. It's not a long play, it's more like a birdie sprint. Of his Monday queue experiences, Su said on the Clubhouse Pod with Shane Bacon, Yeah, I was reading a Golf Digest article Brian Wacker did on you uh, in September. He mentioned how close you've been in Monday qualifying. He said, I think you shot something like 30 under uh, over the course of a few Monday cues. How how close were you? How many many events was that in a row? And how great were you playing and getting so close? So after the, I I think it was right after March, um, once everything was closed and after I got to work and then, we're like, okay, the season's coming back up. Monday qualifiers are opening back up. Let's see, let's see where we're at. Let's try to get something going. Um, so I signed up for this Monday qualifier in, in Utah and I shot seven under there. Um, went in like this a hole playoff <laughs> until it was pitch black at night. I actually had a chance to, uh, shoot putt to make it, but it was so dark and it was such a long day. I just kind of, you know, couldn't really see the break and I kind of guessed and did, I just made a mess out of it. But I shot seven under there, missing a playoff. Following week, um, gosh, I can't remember. It was it was like can't really remember all the places. But I went like seven under, like seven under again in Briggs Ranch, missed it by one. Then came back again at Briggs Ranch in San Antonio, shot eight under, missed it by one. <laughs> and it was, this is it was I mean, I played in like four, <laughs> five, or six. Uh, actually, no, almost six. And then went to Chicago and a couple other places all missed by like one or two shots and I, it was just so draining you're just like god like these mondays are brutal like you right got, you got guys i mean playing for four spots in a 156 guy field um i mean there's gonna be some guys who just get hot with the putter and for me it wasn't wasn't like i was getting hot but i was playing such good golf so uh so what's it called um you know just every i was playing such good golf every week where it was just one shot, like one putt, and it was just like it was just draining. <laughs> You're like, God dang! It, it's again, it's it's such a glimpse into a world that I I I mean, and you know, there's that great uh, Monday Q Twitter account now that really highlights you know what what is all about a Monday qualifier. But this is again, we talk so much and see so much about the biggest events and the guys that play great there and the guys that win, and you forget that. There's dudes that are shooting seven and eight under in a Monday qualifier and not getting in. But through it all, the reason I want to highlight Justin Suh is because of his perspective on everything, on his place in the game, on the state of his own game, um, on, on his future. He has all kinds of success as an amateur and, and could have easily become bitter as he watched Morikawa, Hovland, and Wolf win 
seemingly right away, well, he did not. It's just so wild how young golf is. I mean, you're you're living it, you're seeing it, you're seeing it. I'm on Latino America. I can only imagine. I mean, Corn Ferry, PGA Tour, it's young everywhere. And the thing I feel like that's really switched is we had young players that were great. And now we have young players that could dominate. You know, that's really the difference is, I mean, we're seeing, I mean, Morikawa, Bryson. I mean, these guys are, are, are guys you are competing against and they've already won major titles. And you see that. Is that motivating? Is that is it frustrating? Is it motivating? What does it do to you personally when you see the guys you were playing against beating in college, you know, then turning pro and and you see maybe a Morikawa go off and win a couple times, including a major, and Bryson do all the Bryson stuff he's doing. Does it motivate you more? Does it frustrate you more? Does it put more pressure on you? It's, uh, if, if anything, it's definitely motivating. Um, to see all the guys that I was competing against just a couple of years ago doing what they're doing. Um, it's, it's almost like, like if they're doing it just so quick, it's almost like a reassurance of, of you being able to do it as well. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think that's been kind of like, like I said, the better they do, the better I do. Um, just because, the better they do, I'm like, oh, okay, like, let's step it up. You know, it's, um, you're always just trying to, like, work a little harder than, than the rest of them. So the better they do, you're just kind of, like, watching. You're like, oh, man, like, you just want a major. And it's like, okay, cool. <laughs> and then the major should be coming pretty soon for me, too, if I work hard enough and do the right thing. So he's got the game to make it on tour. Seven, eight under par at Monday qualifiers is insane. The stars just haven't aligned, though it seems they are about to here with his graduation from the Corn Ferry Tour. I'd like to pause here to talk about our upcoming event. On September 17th at Whispering Pines Golf Course in Annandale, Minnesota, MN Left Handers is hosting a lefty righty four ball. This is a best ball event where you'll sign up as a team of two, one right-handed player, one left-handed player. Event payouts will include a skins game and other proxy opportunities such as longest drive, longest putt, closest to the pin. There will be payouts to first place, second place, and one random draw payout as well. Sign up at my email at mnlefthanders. That's the letters mnlefthanders at gmail.com. And for more information on the flyer, that, those can be found at all of our social medias, including Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, he's got the right perspective. You know, he sees the, the, his competitors, the, the guys, his contemporaries, these guys who he came on tour with when in majors and he doesn't, he doesn't seem bitter. He doesn't seem jealous. He seems to be using it as, as motivation saying, all right, well, it's out there. Uh, when's my time? Just got to keep working hard. Uh, more than, more than both of those. He also seems like, like an all time good guy. He recounted a story with Solly from No Laying Ups podcast back in 2021 um, about a, about a time when he was right after the right after the farmers. He felt the need to give back. Director, but I want you to tell us what you did with your farmers check. What you were kind of what incentivized you to do that? You know, especially as somebody who is just starting out in their career and uh, hasn't you know amassed a massive amount of money playing the game like some of the other tour pros. What what encouraged you to uh, to do what you did? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I was born and raised in California. Um, the only times I wasn't living there was we moved to Georgia for a couple of years uh, when I was in like the second and third grade. But besides then, I, I was born and raised. I mean, NorCal guy. I went to school at USC down in SoCal. Um, and during the 2020 season and during the whole pandemic, you know, I've gradually gone back to California, not to just not to see my parents, but to see my sister who lives up in the uh like North Oakland, kind of Berkeley area. And, you know, over the course of the year, it's been super. I mean, it's just, you can see it every, every, cause I, I don't go back every week, but I go back like a few months at a time. And over the course of the year, it just, it was sad to see the neighborhood that my sister, like she lives in. It's a great neighborhood around Lake Merritt. And, you know, these tents are constantly getting built up around this lake. Um, and when you walk around the lake, you 
it's not people that you would think are living in tents. You know, it's, I, I saw like young, like teens, um, people in their twenties, early thirties with kids. And like, just talking about it right now, I get a little shaken up just because of how sad it is. Cause it doesn't take much for, uh, for something bad to happen where you, some huge traumatic thing happens and you just kind of get thrown into a bad, uh, bad path. And then to add on the pandemic hits and, you know, all these businesses are closed where you can't work. And some of them are, you know, like, oh, like most of my friends, like they're, they're working at, you know, like as waiters and waitresses. And they all like reached out to me when, when I donated this check. So I know like everyone's hurting. So during the farmer's insurance, you know, like I went back to San Diego and uh, me and my caddy, we were like going around Sunday trying to find some food. We couldn't find anything. And we're looking at each other and we're like, man this is like really really sad like everything's closed um and during the course of the week i reached out to peter webb my agent and i was like hey man like what can we do to give back and then uh, i met marty the tournament director on tuesday and you know we just started talking and over the course of the week we decided to give back to century uh century club you know they give back to local military uh young kids um that are in school and you know, just back to the community. And that just felt like the right thing to do over, uh, over the course of the tournament. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's powerful stuff. And I think, uh, yeah, it just, it really, it really caught my attention just with, you know, your, you being a younger guy out on tour, really just fighting for fighting for status and that that had registered on your radar is, uh, is, is seriously impressive. And I- so it looks like Justin says the whole package here. I mean, he seems like the kind of guy that the PGA tour needs that the PGA tour, can highlight and spotlight in the face of Liv. He can be the next superstar, and I hope to see lots of success for him in the 2023 PGA Tour season. That's it for Minnesota Left Handers Features, Justin Sa. For more Minnesota Left Handers content and event information, you can subscribe to our YouTube account. You can like us on Facebook, and you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also reach me directly at mnlefthanders at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.